Good evening, good morning, good night, good afternoon. Hope you had a good brunch or late afternoon snack. Um, wherever you are, whatever time it is, I'm assuming it will be either later than it is now or tomorrow or sometime in the future. So um, I will say hello to my future self. Hope all is well. Architecture 530, Environmental Systems 1, Lecture 12. This is the last one. We're doing an analysis of background noise, and we're specifically going to look at uh, mechanical paths. Actually, just one path, not mechanical paths. So what, what we've done previously is looked at transmission loss. So we we basically looked at three these three pathways. We were assuming this was in the space, um, and we weren't ish, we weren't worried with the issue of breakout noise. Um, now we're doing the finish one, the final one. We're looking at at this diffuser. What what is the level at this diffuser, and um, what the diffuser noise contributes to NC on here. So we for the sake of simplicity and not to do this. 15 or 20 times over and over. We're just going to look at the 125 hertz um, octave band, octave band number two. Uh, I'll touch on it at the end of this lecture, some of the computer software that will run this um, and run all the bands uh, and plot the NCs for us. But we want to know what that software is doing. So we're going to look at one octave band. Um, we've got a source that is identified to us. Um, we're using a, a source that necessarily wouldn't be used, but it's good for this scenario. Um, we're going to overlook that it's actually a chiller. Um, but the reason for doing this is the charts are similar and uh, it matches the uh, sound pressure that we, we want to get into. Um, then we've got a duct size of 12 inch um, and that has a one inch line spiral and it's spiral duct. Um, 20 feet of that we're going to look at in reflection and why we're going to consider that now and then room correction so if we're looking at um, the 125 hertz second octave band for unit the mechanical engineer has told us that we're going to need the unit size of 180 we can kind of um, cross out here that um, this is a chiller because you wouldn't really pull ductwork off of a chiller that would go to a diffuser you might look at this from a um, piping aspect for breaking and breakout noise. But let's overlook that um, because we want to stay in sound pressure level. This has sound pressure level. Um, and we're going to assume this is sound pressure level um, from the supply side. And we're going to look at this, this pathway here. So we're taking this example manufacturer data and sound pressure level. And we're assuming that this is the output side going through the ductwork at the diffuser and out. Um, so if we look at unit size 180, look at the 125 octave band, we're at 70 dB um, SPL. So that's where we want to be. That makes it easy. Just be mindful if this is power level, um, we want to convert that over to pressure level. Um, we're not going to do it in here. And the reason I skip over it is um, if you're really going to do this analysis, you're going to have a spreadsheet set up already or you're going to run one of the programs to do it and you can enter it in there. Um, I think we've had enough math for um, 12 lectures, so we should be good to go on that. Next, um, we want to look at the insertion loss. This is not doing um, adding sources. We're adding dBs. This is a straight insertion loss of 12 inch one inch line one inch thick lined spiral round duct at 20 feet so if we look at 12 inch go to um, second octave band 125 hertz it's a 0 0.46 we've got 20 feet of that gives us a insertion loss of minus 9.2 db um, the next one is we get to take into account for in reflection and this works well at the lower frequencies uh, if we could have used this in the previous example when we had an issue at 250 and 125 um, and it was due to ductwork, we could come look at this in loss and see if we can gain some in there. Um, so in this case, we get to use it. 
remember we're looking at 125 which is the second octave band and um, we have a 12 inch round duct gives us a insertion loss of negative 7 db so that that's that's good for us on there um, <clears throat> if we go down to a smaller duct we get noticeable improvement but we're increasing the velocity increase the velocity that might bump up um, how much self produced noise the diffuser has so we're going to stick with the seven see where that lands us um, the next part is we get to do a room correction and what that's saying is we've done um, we have a source the duct is attenuating so much noise that's that 9.2 um, we've got an in reflection of negative seven. And so once it comes out into the space, um, we have another reduction due to the nature of the space, due to the volume of the space, due to the inverse square log. And this space effect takes all that into account um, based on what the ceiling is. Um, sometimes I, I think that this is a little bit too generous, but it's good to start here. Um, see where you're at and then go from there. So we're looking at the 125, the second octave band, and we're using a glass fiber tile ceiling. So we're at uh, an insertion loss of minus 16 dB. We add all those together because they're negative, so we're adding them. Um, we've got 70 and we um, pull out all of the attenuation, all the insertion losses gives us a 37 db level at 125 hertz now we want to find out what the nc is and where that stands and so if you're going to do this problem as a problem um, there'll be an attachment for a larger file uh, pdf that you can blow this up to see it better a little bit tough to see it on a screen like this but you'll have the pdf and can recreate this so we're looking at 125 hertz we're at 37 db so 35 if we were at 35, that would be NC15, 36, 37. Um, now we've got a little bit of cross at 20. Um, at 20, it looks like we're at 39, so we drop down two. Um, gives us NC18. So it's not a quite a linear scale. Um, and I instead of saying it's um, 15, and we're up to one, two, and that that is um, NC17. I'd rather drop down from 39 and say we're at 37 and subtract two off of that and say we're at NC18 rather than NC17. I would want to err on the side of um, being more cautious on that. So that's how we get there because there's really only four ticks in between there. Um, and there's there's no need to really say it's eight uh, NC 17.5. We'll just go with the higher one. And so if we were designing for a, an NC 30 space, we would be um, fine. Um, if we, w if we knew that there were four diffusers at that level. Um, so if there are four diffusers, um, we add six DB, right? If we have two of the same sources at 37, that means we go up three, which would be um, 40. Add two more, that'd be 43. So we would be at a 43 level at 125. So if we go up 43, one, two, three. Um, if we look at NC30, that is that crosses at 49, 48, 47. So if that crosses at 47, go down three or four. One, two, three, four. So if we go down four, that's NC26. So if we were, we were um, designing for a 30 space, that would be fine. If we were designing for a 20 space, we'd be a little bit high on that. If it's only one and we're designing for a 20, NC18 is fine. So we just plot it on the chart, um, move the curve over. And again, um, there are plethora of software out there that we use in um, 520 architectural acoustics that uh, maps this, um, calculates what the levels are, and then gives us per octave band, not per frequency, per octave band what the levels are, and it helps identify um, where our spikes are. So there's adding our sources together if we need to do that. Um, <clears throat> so in wrapping up, um, 
that is how we figure out, um, do a mechanical analysis, figure out NC. Previous to that was isolation. Um, and if we were doing this out in the wild um, for mechanical analysis, we would do um, AIM, which is noise predi prediction. This is a free program. Or TAP, train acoustics program. Um, and then if we were doing acoustic modeling, we would use um, Ease um, to model the room. We would use Ezra to test the room. And then we would use SysTune to um, set up the audio system on there. And then um, we would do our details and our documentations in both still for um, acoustics and audio, video, and control, a majority of what is shown and documented for a system is still in AutoCAD because of the details. The coordination is in Revit, and then there are some um, approaches you can take in Rhino that uh, will give you um, some acoustic uh, ray tracing ability um, that works really well, but it doesn't do it across all octave bands or all frequencies. So that's a good early tool to use. Um, so for mechanical analysis, um, AIM or TAP for acoustic modeling, it's EASE. Um, for testing, it's EASE RA. And then for audio setup, it's SysTune. And then from the measurement side, there's a plethora of them from Room Acoustics Wizard, um, EASE RA. Um, there's audio tools on the iPad. Um, and there's a plethora of these that you can use for that and that really rounds up rounds off um, where we're at we do a lot of this in 520 and 521 do um, full designs and full acoustic narratives um, so if that's something that interests you uh, I hope to see you there and uh, I wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors it's like you got let go from a sporting team but uh, really it's a uh, Great to have all of you, um, and I look forward to seeing what you do in your um, next projects and uh, your next presentations. Thanks, and good night out in Radioland.